So, when you're given a task to pick a word between either good or evil that best describes yourself, which one would you pick? I doubt many people will pick the latter unless you really believe so. But here's the real question. Can we agree that everyone in this world has some sort of underlying vicious character? Now, when I say vicious, I'm not talking about you just tying your friend's shoelaces and watching them wobble, right? The evil I'm talking about is intentionally harming someone, both physically and psychologically, that leads to a dehumanization of oneself that is very against humanity. But that evil isn't just spontaneously formed. There has to be some underlying factors that led someone to commit those vicious acts. Now, when you look at the image of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, look at Dr. Jekyll. He looks very well accomplished and well put together. And now making a transition to Mr. Hyde, the whole character looks very eerie, demonic, and vicious. And now we can assume by looking at the gun in his hand that he was also influenced by the outside factors and which made him to be like that. So, man is not inherently evil, but rather demonstrates iniquitous acts originally recessive in a person's underlying character based on the influence of extrinsic factors. So what's interesting about this is that there was actually an experiment conducted in the 70s to determine whether the brutality possessed by the prison guards were, was actually due to the situational environment. So this guy named Philip Zimbardo from Stanford conducts an experiment where, in a, by creating a setting where he faced the participants as either prisoners or prison guards. So he records his findings and then later found out that these participants readily conformed to their social norms. The prison guards were so absorbed to the fake reality to an extent that they were harassing the prisoners and using violence against them. The prisoners were also conformed to their reality as well. And one of the participants, prisoner A612, was actually suffering from emotional disturbance. Realizing the point that these prisoners and prison guards were both very young and healthy before the experiment proves the fact that these behaviors were due to situational environment rather than dispositional factors. They kind of lost their sense of identity and responsibility because they were so absorbed to the norms of the environment that the, which could also mean that the evil that was deep beneath their invisible spectrum emerged into their reality to conform to the outside factors. Now when we look up the forms of reality and how they are dominated by evil, we will go further into depths of how and where that evil is brought about. You can find hypotheses about how that happens in short stories all around the world, including Where You Going, Where You Been by Joyce Carol Oates. Now in this story, we're introduced to Connie, a young girl who is trying to move herself forward in the world, trying to become mature and experience those mature events. She hangs out with boys in alleyways. She even tries to hang out with the cool kids at different restaurants. But she goes too far when she makes eye contact with a man named Armed Friend. Now this man, he shows up at Connie's house and tries to coax her out of the house. And as we progress through the story, we realize that Arnold Friend represents that adulthood that Connie so desperately wanted to appeal to. He is much older and he tries to almost viciously pull her from her house, her safe haven, and ultimately those childhood fantasies of hers. Arnold Friend, however, may not have started as evil. He aged, and as people age, they go through events, and those events affect them in different ways and bring out that evil. And that is possibly what Arnold Friend had gone through, and now he is that factor that is trying to drag Connie back into the adult world. With the previous character, Arnold Friend, he used vicious tendencies in order to pull out others' evil underlying characteristics. But as we look on to other short stories, we can see that the situational factors aren't as brutal, such as in Good Country People. In this story, an older woman around 30 years of age is named Joy. Now Joy, when you think of Joy, you think of happiness, you think of light. However, as the story progresses, we learn that she changes her name. 
And not only that, she changes it to Hoga. Now when you think of Hoga, you don't think joy and light. You think of an old creepy lady. But that's not the only reason she changes her name. There's reasons she changes her name and rebels, and it's all because of her mother. Her mother has constant interference into her, her adult life. And Hoga didn't want that. And Hoga also had other events that changed her life, such as losing her leg in an accident. She was almost going against the world. By going against the world, though, she was influencing herself into experiencing and testing the waters with her evil character, such as lying about her age, even being frisky with an underage boy. And those are the beginnings, as we have said, to becoming evil. They don't start right away. They start slowly. However, as we end this video, we will see that not everyone is influenced by the same events. Some events may be small and some may be larger. It all depends on the person and the events they can be influenced by. But now we lead you back to the beginning. Do you think you are evil or do you think you are good? Thank you for coming to our TED Talk.